What's poppin' dogs? Mr. Allen here about to do a little adding and subtracting of rational expressions with unlike denominators in this video. But before we get to the algebra, all right, let's take it back to the basics, adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators, right? This is back in like third, fourth grade. You probably forgot about it. Whatever. It's okay. I'm gonna help you out. Okay, but it does connect to this other stuff here. So what do I need in order to add or subtract with fractions? Well, I need common denominators. With multiplication, I can just multiply straight across. Division is another thing. I got other videos on that. But for addition and subtraction, these two have to be the same. So how do I do that? Well, can I rewrite this fraction as something over 6 to match that guy? Yes, I can. I can multiply 3 here by a 2, and it will become 6. But whatever I do to my denominator, I got to do to my numerator as well. And why is that? Not just like, oh, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the same thing. I'll do the same thing here. No. Okay. The reason why, what's 2 divided by 2? That's 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. And multiplying by 1 does not actually change it. Right? It's equivalent. It'll look different, but it's equivalent. Okay? So multiplying by 1 is a cool little, you know, crafty mathematical move. All right, so now I have 2 times 2 in the numerator because we said multiplying across with uh, multiplication of fractions. That's going to become 4. 2 times 3 is 6 plus, and then we have 5 over 6. Boom. So now I have like denominators. I can just add my numerators. Four or sorry, 4 plus 5 is 9. 6 is my denominator. You do not add the denominators, right? Okay, the denominator just stays the same. We just add the numerators. And then from here, if I can simplify, I will simplify. And I can with this one. They're both divisible by 3. Uh, so I'll get 3 over 2. I know it's an improper fraction, but I don't care. Improper fractions are way cooler than mixed numbers. It is 1.5 or 1.5. But, dude, mixed numbers, they're not easy to math with. So why do I even want to use them, right? I'm just, it's not my thing. It's not my cup of tea. Um, I like improper fractions. But I'm a mathematical baddie, if you will. So I'm going to live that way. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, next one, I got five, I got seven. Can I make either one of those look like each other? No. So my usual strategy then is just to multiply by each other. So this one's going to be seven over seven multiplied to that one fifth, and this will be five over five, right? These are both one times anything is that anything. It's going to look different, but it is equivalent. Cool. Awesome. There are certain scenarios where they don't like go into each other technically, but you can manipulate each one of them with smaller numbers. That's fine too. This one did not work out that way. So I'm going to have 7 um, over 35 minus 10 over 35. And if you've ever like, if you multiply by too big of numbers, but you still get uh, common denominators, that's totally fine. You just will have to do some simplifications later on. Always check for simplifications. Here, we did what we had to do. The, the smallest we could do, we still have to simplify. So always check. So I got 7 minus 10, that's negative 3 over 35. Boom. Awesome. All right. So the thing here is that we want to get into one fraction with a common denominator. We'll do any kind of simplifications we can, and then we're done. Cool? So let's do that over here on the right-hand side. Um, we got 3x over 4, and I have x plus 1 over 2x. So what do I do with that? Well, what do these things have in common? Well, 2 and 4, couldn't I make this into a 4 by multiplying by, say, 2 over 2? Absolutely. But that would make that denominator a 4x. Does this one need an x? Yeah, the denominator does not have an x. So I'll multiply this by x over x. Now I'm going to have 3x, x times x is squared, over 4x plus, and here I have 2 times x plus 1. I'm going to write it like this for now, over 4x. OK. So the reason why I wrote that is because I have to also remember to distribute it. You can do that on the fly. If you'd like, you'd be like, oh, it's 2x plus 2. Cool. I'm fine with that. Just don't forget to distribute into both of those. All right? And now I have 3x squared. I'm going to write it as one fraction here. 3x squared plus 2x plus 2 all over 4x because they're the same denominator. All right? Now, if I can combine like terms up here in the numerator, I'll do that. If I could possibly take out a GCF or anything like that and reduce, I would do that. But there's nothing here that I can do with this one. Boom, we are done. Now, I know some texts will ask you for like domain restrictions with these. And that goes to be like, hey, I can't divide by zero. So what X values would make me divide by zero here? Well, that would just be zero. So if your uh, teacher asks you, hey, I want domain restrictions, you could also say where X does not equal zero. 
Cool. I didn't ask that here, but if they do ask for it, X cannot equal zero needs to be specified there because it would make this guy undefined in the original. All right? Dope. Next one. We'll go back to uh, green for this. I feel like the green really pops with the purple. It looks cool. Um, all right. What? What do I do here? I can't tell. I can't tell what's going on with this one. I don't know what to do. Well, I do know what to do. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to write it over here right now because I'm going to run out of room otherwise. But this one down here, I can't really tell what I need to get a common denominator unless it is in factored form, if it needs to be in factored form. right? If it can be factored, we need to factor it. I can take out an X here, and I'm going to be left with um, 3 plus, so I have 3X plus 1. So we got 3X plus 1, and this will be with a 2 over here minus four over x, okay? So now I think it's a little more clear as to what we need, which what do they do you have? They both have an x factored out here, but this three x plus one needs to be present over here as well. And I'm gonna write that in here. So we have three x plus one, sorry, it's so tiny, three x plus one is gonna be multiplied to both. So now let's rewrite it, I've got two, over x times 3x plus 1 minus 4 times 3x plus 1 over x times 3x plus 1. Okay. Now, a common thing people do, they're like, I'll just cancel these out and I'll put it together. No, because then you lose the common denominator. So don't do that. One thing I am going to suggest here, guys, is you got to be real careful with the subtraction here. I'm going to make this addition and throw that negative up in that numerator and distribute a negative four. Okay, super duper important that you distribute that negative four. If that helps you to do that, go for it. If you don't need to, you just know that the negative goes with it. That's great too. Okay, whatever you got to do. So now I have two minus, and that's what, 12x minus four. That's my numerator. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna combine some like terms real quick, okay? I'm gonna do this in a different color right now so that it actually uh, doesn't blend in. I often do this little side math because these kind of get so, so intense. So I'm gonna write down my two minus 12x minus four. I'm gonna clean that up when I write my final answer now. So I don't wanna rewrite my denominator so many times. So I have negative 12x minus two, right? Two and negative four adds to negative two all over x times 3x plus 1. Final answer because this is only divisible by 2, which would not reduce with that. I can't take out any x's or anything like that from the numerator to cancel. Nope, that's it. Done. If you are asked for domain restrictions, x would not be able to equal. Well, I've got my x equaling 0 right here would be an issue. And then I would also have this, um, it would actually be what, negative one-third? If I set 3x plus 1 equal to 0 and solved, I'd get negative one-third. Not every teacher asks for that, but if they do, um, I would say probably like in an honors class, they might ask for these domain restrictions here. All right? Not every class. They don't always do that. Um, they'll do that with solving, but not always with simplifications. Okay? But just in case. I got your back. I got your back. All right, last one here, dogs. Last one. We'll do blue for this one, at least for part of it. Interesting. I got a plus 2 here. I got like, oops, is that x plus 2? Is that the same? No. It's got to be factored, okay? It's going to be multiplied, right? Factors that you're going to use for this. So let's factor this thing here, and I'm just going to write it like this. X plus 2, X plus 1. Because what multiplies the 2 and adds the 3 is 2 and 1. So now, is it clear what that one needs? It's got an X plus 2, does not have an X plus 1. So let's multiply this one by X plus 1 over X plus 1. I actually find these to oftentimes be like the easiest ones when I'm just factoring a normal trinomial and I'm like, I see the factor. I get what I need to do. But it's not always, but I just find that to be a little easier. Actually, I'm going to switch over to orange. I haven't used orange a ton. Okay. Um, so this one here is 5x plus 3 over, uh, we have, let's see here, uh, x plus 2, x plus 1. Plus, and then I have 2. Remember, this is going to get distributed. I'll do that up here to save a little space. 2x plus 2 over that same denominator. x plus 2, x plus 1. And now let's combine our like terms. And I think we're pretty much done here. 5x, 2x, that gives me 7x 
three, two, that gives me five. Nothing I can factor out there, but the combining like terms, that felt like we did something there, right? It's always unfortunate when the, uh, that's a voice crack, always unfortunate when the, with a like term, nothing, there's no like terms. You're like, did I do this right? Because I feel like I need, should be doing more math than what I'm doing. Um, yes, you are doing it right. It's okay. It does happen where there's no like terms or anything like that. That five kind of got blended in with the circling there, but whatever. Okay, there we go. Final answer. And if your teacher asks for domain restrictions, X cannot equal. It'd be these guys right here that'll tell me. So negative two and negative one, because negative two would make that factor zero, makes the whole denominator zero. Negative one would make the other factor zero, which makes the whole denominator zero zero boom diggity dope i feel like i should have circled this so it's like the others right Woo, woo, cool awesome all right there we go again domain restrictions not every teacher asks for those but if they do i got you covered otherwise i hope this helps guys i hope that helped make the uh, little connection there back to the basics back to the old days of wonderful math without letters aka variables but uh, in any event Rational functions, rational expressions rather, um, are super dope. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments. Have a great day.